It's older than all of us put together, I think. Uh, it opened back in 1887, 132 years old. It's officially opening today. And with me, Ecor Hotel CEO and Chairman Sebastian Bazan joins me. Good morning and congratulations morning. Uh, on the reopening of Raffles Hotel. Now, it comes at a very difficult time. So much uncertainty out there. The prolonged U.S.-China trade war, Brexit, problems in Hong Kong. How is it impacting business in the industry? Well, there's, I have a lot in life. Whatever you don't control, don't stress for it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in the hotel industry, every quarter I have a bad, a bad environment someplace and a good environment someplace else. So it's been really bad in Brazil a couple of years ago. It's very good in Brazil today, and it's obviously uh, difficult here in Asia Pacific. Uh, does not matter. Aqua is getting bigger and bigger. Tourism, which is kind of really interesting, as complex as the world is, as messy as it is, You've never seen so much international travelers. A billion five today, it will be a couple of billion in five years. So don't you worry about it. They don't go to country because of geopolitical environment, but they go elsewhere. Um, but when you take a look at the data out of all the countries around the world, they're showing a weakening in growth. And with the trade war, investment and investor sentiment is impacted. Are you not seeing any impact at all on your business? Well, we're seeing impact when it comes to what we call Average daily room occupancy could slow down. However, there's a lack of supply in China, so there's a lot of new hotels coming in China and a lot of actually new users of new hotels. Something in sub saharan Africa, something in the Middle East, something in South America. So you, you just have to make long-term bet in our industry, long-term being between 5 to 20 years. So, and that industry is in the hands of still mom-and-pop hotel operators. So the benefit of this is... For our core, for Intercon, for Hilton, Myriad, we still have large capacity to grow. That industry hasn't been consolidated as of yet, and it is the second largest industry on the planet, is travel, tourism, uh, and food and beverage. So. Uh, Asia has pretty much been preoccupied by the protests in Hong Kong, more than four months on now. And given that Chinese tourists account for 75, 80% of tourist arrivals staying, right. staying in Hong Kong, I mean, how, how detrimental has that been to you? Uh, pretty devastating. So can, Kong, can you put a number to that? Yeah, Hong Kong for us for the last uh, two quarters is down 40%, 4-0. China is down 6%. Uh, we go to Australia, it's down 5%. However, uh, Thailand is still up, Malaysia is still up, Singapore is still up. So it just weathers the storm. But it is impactful. But Aqua is so diversified today. So again, uh, it may be slowing down in Asia. It's actually picking up in Eastern Europe uh, in the Middle East and Africa. So we're fine. And, and no end in sight, though, for the Hong Kong protests. And from what we understand, hotel operators, hotels, basically are asking their staff to go and leave for about three days. Uh, what's the impact if the protests were to get prolonged? Do you see job cuts in, well, in the foreseeable future? Aqua never does, and I'm very serious here. Uh, it's true when you go from 70% occupancy to 20% occupancy, I mean, there's not that much for the staff. So you do ask them to go for two or three days. Uh, but you know, one thing about my company, I'm not playing it actually because I'm with you. We've never exited a country. We've never really laid off people. Just be patient because people remember when you're there in the bad times. So an Aqua has been in your region for the last 50 years, and so it's true for other regions on the planet. So will be with you and will be with your employees. You talked about how some other markets are compensating for that slowdown in Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, which ones are your growth areas? I mean, when you take a look at analyst reports, they say Europe is where the focus should be for you. Well, Europe is big. Europe for me is 50%, 5-0. Uh, it was 80% when I started six years ago, but on purpose I diversified it away to see the growth in Asia Pacific uh, and in, again, Middle East, South America and other countries. So. Europe is a resilient market, it's a buffer, uh, because 80% of all the destinations of major travelers end up in Europe. So they go to Barcelona, they go to London, they go to Paris, but we are an enormous recipient of international travelers, be it from America or be it from China. So we continue basically expanding in Europe, but we already have the largest market share in Europe. I just cannot, I cannot double down on my market share in Europe. I can double down in Middle East, Africa, South America, and Asia Pacific. So the growth is still in Asia Pacific. And again, it may be difficult for the next couple of years, does not matter. It is in a downturn that you make the best decisions. The impact of Brexit on That the I don't control business. either. <laughs> it's, uh, Brexit for us, it's, it's pretty interesting. It has an impact on the pounds going lower, i.e. greater numbers of people taking advantage of the pound being lower going to England, and English people not traveling because it's too expensive to travel. So 
It was in the capital cities of the UK. It's never been better since Brexit happened a couple of years ago. I mean, likely Brexit not happening, but Brexit uh, being the, uh, the discussion. So it's pretty resilient for us. Today, whether Brexit is going to be happening or not, I know, anybody knows, I guess, we're going to have some macroeconomic downturns in the next couple of years because of this, for sure. Impact on tourism and hotels, I don't know as of yet. Of course, it will be impactful, but it could be very little. You talk about how Europe accounts for 50% yeah. of, of your business. I mean, what then would be the biggest risk for your business? Would it be Brexit? Would it be the slowdown in, in Germany that could impact the rest of the region? Um, it's, uh, and again, 80% of my business is B2B, which is business related. So corporate people using the hotel and 25% is leisure. Uh, capital cities are not that impacted. What you being impacted the most is provinces. So second 30 cities, which has been happening in the UK, where it's not been rosy for the last couple of years in those provinces, but it's been good in London and Manchester. Um, I, uh, probably the greatest impact will be macroeconomic headwinds in Germany and France, because we do depend quite a bit on those two countries. Am I worried about France? No. France is a very resilient country, which is good. Uh, on the downside, but it's not good because it never go up more than three or four percent GDP growth. So, but it never go down three percent. Germany, watch out uh, because they're very much export driven, and so they obviously rely quite a bit on Asia Pacific, and all, but they have no debt. Many strong mid-sized companies, uh, and those are very well managed companies. So, don't ever bet against Germany.